Yep. Hey, how you doing? I'm Charlie. Welcome back to the Raise Up Podcast. That's I'm Athena. Athena. <laughs> And we're so glad that you guys joined us. And for some of the people that are following us around on all the adventures, we thought we would just catch you up on what's been going on in the last uh, three weeks. So, Charlie, why don't you tell us what we've been up to? It has been a... Uh, we, we got to see a lot of airports. And we got to see a lot of different things, a lot of different people. So yes. we left from here and we flew to Austin, Texas. And... Uh, we could talk about Austin first. We yeah. can do the first thing. I, first of all, I love uh, Austin because for those of you who know me, I just enjoy eating food that not everyone enjoys. So uh, I, I have a gluten-free lifestyle and I stick to non-dairy. I will allow some little bit of butter, but um, for the most part. So I, I love the food in Austin. It is so good. As you guys know well, <clears throat> that I have been on a health uh, health journey uh, to get myself healthier. I have uh, dropped a bunch of weight, and so I have been on this health journey. Not as, I think, regimented as my wife, um, but differently regimented. Um, she's definitely watching some of the food that she takes in. I definitely watch what food I take in, too, but I am not on the gluten-free and the dairy-free diet whatsoever, or the <laughs> journey that she is on. So sometimes we just make sacrifices in restaurants that we go to so the other person can be happy. Um, but there's usually either way that we go, there's something one of us could eat at either of the restaurants. Yeah. So, and, and Austin does give a great flair of food, probably one of the more healthier places that we have eaten yeah. <clears throat> um, and all the places that we've gone to in Vegas and Austin and to Arizona. Arizona was pretty healthy too. So it seems like options. in the warmer climates, there's a lot more healthier people as you walk around and you see um, <clears throat> people are into their fitnesses, biking, running, uh, things like that. So. I think in Alaska, sometimes we get into the, uh, I call it the bear phase, is that we uh, we do really good in the summertime and we fatten up and, then we, the and then we go to the hibernation time and then we're cold and we're trying to keep that RF uh, factor in there. And I tell you, uh, my, my RF factor, which is um, your heat factor, as I lose more weight, I, I'm not, you can see I'm in a big puffy Klein jacket today and I am comfortably warm, but um, normally I would be invested in a short sleeve shirt uh, if I was 117 pounds yeah. heavier. So um, I can tell you that uh, it's been a lot different journey for me and on my uh, warm factor, which my wife can appreciate because she always likes to be warm at 78 degrees. <laughs> yes, I just prefer to be hot, like almost hot in almost every um, area. So. And I enjoy the warmth now too. Um, when we were in, I, I wanna say when we were in uh, Palm Springs, it was 114 degrees and I really didn't find it that bad. I mean, I always thought I was gonna dread it, but um, even at night when it drove down to 112, it was super comfortable warm, but it was, it was definitely doable. Yeah. So. Austin, I Texas, I mean, amazing. We, start, we got there a day and a half early. Um, we got there the night before and then we spent the next day, enjoyed some food, friends. We hung yep. out and did a bunch of things. Um, so that was a conference that we have been choosing to be a part of here for um, about almost a year. And so that conference is called Awaken. And it has just been a, uh, a focus on what are, Charlie and I have been on this journey of what are some of the things that are potentially holding us back in our relationship, in our business, and really been on this like curious discovery. Yeah, so as you guys well know, my wife, she does lots of research on things and lots of podcasts and lots of things. And she found Danny and uh, Danny was part of it. And she went for the first couple of conferences and I joined in on the third one, I think it was. And then we've gone to everyone since then. I apologize, let me shut this down. Um, and we've been to everyone since then. So it's been a great journey. Um, really big believers in Danny um, and the group. I mean, it's just been a really good intensive group that we belong to. We belong to Awaken and we belong to another one called Inner Circle, which is a yeah. takeoff from Awaken. It's a higher level. Yeah, it's one. like the it's like the entrepreneur group for yeah. that um, for that conference. It's, I think that really when we were younger in business, I just didn't think about what I was holding myself back from. Like it wasn't even a conversation that was happening amongst some of the groups that we were already a part of, or even our friends dialogue. Like it just didn't occur to me that I needed to like sit down and think about is the reason why I'm bidding this contract at this level because I don't think, I have some kind of limiting belief around we need to do this in order to get this, or we're gonna have to give to get, or 
Uh, and it's like there's so many layers of the human psyche that I just didn't understand affect our finances in all of these profound ways. And, and now that we're older, it's like I lean towards these groups that are looking at the whole picture, not just running the numbers on this is what the percentages are that we should be at. And so our previous group of Spinning Wheels, which was an amazing group, yeah. we did really well with them for about five or six years. Yeah, we love those guys. <clears throat> still do, still talk to them all the time. But they were more diving down into the financials, the limousine industry, the bus industry, more transportation. And, and it was really our, was one of our key focuses at the time. But once you realize that there's health, there's uh, financial, there's relationship, um, and am I missing? And then there's a spiritual aspect. Yeah, the spiritual life. aspect too. So it was a little bit more of a deeper group to be into that just didn't give you one side of it. It's like four quadrants that we were yeah. looking and we were getting one quadrant, which was filling that quadrant. But this one seems like it just goes even a little deeper into everything else because if you're spiritually not right, if your healthy is not right, your relationship's not right, it affects your fourth one, which is your business and your financial. And if your financial's right or right, it usually it affects all the rest of those ones too. So yeah. the four quadrants is really... really spoke to us and makes sense. And it makes it whole. So that yeah. when I say it, so we're, we're more whole than I think we've ever been um, before. In this last year, it's been whole. But, and you can see why we do these podcasts, because we really wanted to bring what we were learning out to you guys and show you guys really the difference of what it is just to be a member of a group or an entrepreneur group. But really kind of looking at this in a whole and saying that there's more to it than just the financial side of the business yes. side. I, I, I almost think that's the easier side than it is. It absolutely. It's like it, the difference it, between sales and operations. Yeah. It's, sales is so easy compared to operations. And once you realize that all the rest of it really takes in a, a big effect, it's, it's, it's mind boggling. I mean, it really, I think if we'd learned this years ago, we would be up there, but I always think there's a time and a place when you're learning this and we had even a person in our group this last week, she goes, if I would only learn this when I was 25, things would be all different. I'm like, no, it wouldn't. It was the right time and the right places yeah. when you learned it. And this is the right time and the right place that we're learning it. So we're kind of diving in. So the Awaken group, when you're in the inner circle group, you're invited to all the Awakenings, all the other ones that they have, any, any kind of ones. Group. Yeah, so you're allowed to go in the intensive group. So we try to make sure that we make all of them and they're about every six or seven weeks. So they're pretty constant throughout the year. So we have a lot of traveling that we're doing. It's a, it's a big financial commitment and time commitment away from our kids and our family, our business, but in whole, we get to bring it all back, so. Yes, and the piece too that I think is, is special about this scenario is that you don't really have a whole, like six months goes by and where you start to backslide because you're back into the community within a couple of months. And if you're staying engaged online, it just, it, it, it makes sense and it definitely works for us. And we can see it working for other people. So it's, um, so we said all that to say that the first part of the trip was awakened. Then we stopped in Las Vegas. Well, let's, before that, we were able to uh, go to five good concerts while we were there too. So, um, oh, yes. Austin well, we were City Limits Austin were the going. Limits, yes. And so I had no idea what Austin City Limits was. And the last day that we were there, we didn't fly out until the next day. So we had some time to kill. And so Athena started doing some decent research and she goes, Well, hey. no, no, no. So this is how this goes down is, uh, what are we gonna do is the question. And Charlie was getting a massage and We I, went and got massages. But you were getting a massage you and I knew first. that the question was gonna come up, what are we doing now? And so I was like, well, I wonder what's going on with ACL. Like, can we get tickets? And I was looking and of course there's the normal like ticket places where you could pay three times the ticket and I'm not gonna name any of the ticket box office names, but um, and then I was like, gosh, I wonder if if we go down there, if we can just find somebody who's like done with their done with their wristbands. badge or whatever, yeah. wristband or whatever. And so when he got when I picked him up from the massage place, um, we went down, we walked went about down a mile and a half to the. Uh, we had to find a parking spot, which was nearly impossible. So we had to find it and nudge in somewhere, which I ended up getting a ticket for That's because right. we parked in the wrong place. Much. It wasn't that bad. And then um, we walked down, and there wasn't one person 
that was giving away badges or selling them, there was like a fleet of them. Like there was yeah. like 20 or 30 people on bicycles running around trying to sell us badges. So we ended up getting some VIP badges that would have normally cost like $750 yeah. a day. They were three day passes, but we were at the last day. <laughs> yeah. And we didn't get there until like 4.30 in the afternoon. It ended at 10, but we got the last five hours. So we got to go to some super cool concerts. Yeah. We got all VIP entrance. Uh, we went to, I think, five different people, artists that we went to. Some we've never heard of, some we have, some our daughter loved. And oh, uh, yes. so it was just really interesting. So that was our Austin. We flew out the next day and then we went to Vegas. And then we met up with our friends, JR and Maria Gaza. Yep, you guys from Diamond might Limousine. Have, you might have uh, seen them before on previous episodes. We had the picture of Bucky's with Maria and oh, JR. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep, so they they are part of a little group of friends that we all kind of like catch up with each other and work to do something each year together. So they consistently join us in um, shenanigans. Yeah, forward. he's my he's my driver. It helps me. I say, hey, I just bought four ambulances. Will you help me go drive some of them? And he's like, yeah. And so we met up with them and we rented a nice little house and well, a nice big house and uh, there. It, it was an interesting house. It was a really uh, it was very, very clean, and it was like incredibly clean, like no dust bunnies. I, big I mean, swimming pool. Yeah, and so. But we, the pictures it, when you first got it, and then we saw the horse blankets and, the, and like the the bedrooms, and I call them horse, horse blankets because they blankets, looked like they were quilted pattern blankets. Yeah, it was just that they we were there. But once you got into the place, it was really comfortable. They came in the next day, and we hit Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah. We had a little bit of downtime. We had four days in between our next conference. That we had to go to so we didn't see the point of flying all the way home which was going to be like a you know an eight hour day and then turn around. turn around two days later to fly 14 hours to dc so yeah. we kind of took a little break and we saw earth wind and fire as a concert that was amazing we had great seats and then uh the next night was, was one garth of the best but garth brooks charlie oh one word. of his favorite concerts now you know, as you start to go into more concerts and do more stuff, you, you really you think, oh, there's nothing that's going to top the Eagles. There's nothing that's going to top this band, Journey, Death Leopard. I mean, we've really liked it, the live entertainment. And then when we went to the Garth Brooks concerts, that's in my top five now. I mean, I, I can't tell you exactly which one it is, but <clears throat> he is such an artist and he is such an entertainer. And he has the, I mean, he's so believable in everything he talks about and how he's enthusiastic. A good Great. And Trisha Yearwood, his wife, came out and we were able to watch that concert. And like when he ended his two hour concert, he did a encore and he did another six or seven songs. Like it was just one after another. And he was so exhausted at the end, he dropped his guitar and he's like, OK, I'm done. Like it was his first performance coming back into a the residency. Uh, the residency. And he was doing eight shows there. And it was just like, holy tamale. He put on. And at first we just thought it was going to be him. And then all of a sudden he lifted the curtain. There was 13 other people behind yeah. it, his whole entire band going back from 1985. Yeah. So it was epic. It was super great. I mean, we couldn't have gone to a better concert. We spent a lot of money on the tickets, but the tickets were worth every penny of it. And uh, we had a good time. And really, that was our one of our first experiences in the United States where they had you put your phone away. So they had these, yeah. like... Um, we did that in Thailand when we went to a yeah, show. That was, that's why I said America, because yeah. Thailand, they actually like <laughs> took your phone and put it in the cubby. But th this one makes more sense where you were issued a little pa pouch and you put the phone in and you hold on to the pouch. <laughs> and you have to unlock it when you leave. So it was yeah. so funny as you watched everybody sitting around, they're like actually talking to people. And yeah. we were making friends with other people sitting next to us. And I kidded with this lady. I'm like, hey, would you take a picture of this? And she's like, yeah. And then I'm like, I, we have no phones. And she's like, oh, that's right. You know, because it was so different for us not to be able to have a phone to record it because yeah. I if you guys see me I do a lot of buy podcasts because I love when people go on concerts and they do things and I can see what they're seeing and watch what they are so I always kind of do some Facebook lives and I take some videos and we come home and we show our kids and our yeah. friends the concerts that we went to it's just one of the part of the things we like to do is share so you know and and that's probably if you don't follow us on Facebook or Instagram that is a piece that is really it's one of Charlie's like little maybe superpowers is he's really good about documenting the stuff that we do and it's coming from this place of wow this is so cool I want to share it with everybody and I think that our son also he he likes to share all the upcoming and new things and when he was little he was like mom my friends tell me that I'm bragging and I'm like, son, you're not bragging. You're just excited about stuff that's going on in your life and your lifestyle is different from your friends. And well, so it's like, 
And he was like, yeah. And I go, so just tell him that I just have a different lifestyle. And, and I go, and honestly, you get to do a bunch of cool stuff because we value experience in our family. And you know, that's, I think, what some of the testimonies, like, I don't four-wheeler that much. I don't jet ski very much. We do plan our boats, but we own six jet skis. We have eight four-wheelers. We have that because when people come up to our place and we want them to come stay with us, we and want them to have the experience, experience that we have yes. because there's a lot of people who don't get those experiences and we're very blessed that we work really hard and we do things and we have things. So when people come up to our place, like they don't have to usually bring their four-wheelers. We have wheelers, we have boats, we have jet skis, and we open those up to our friends and family all the time. And that's why... And since we're building a new house up there, it's going to be a big house and six bedrooms, seven bath, and yeah. we're going to experience more family. And, you know, we have a lot of family members are here and we have a lot of grandkids and other things. So it's like the experiences that we get to live now, it's, it's, it's a place that we didn't have as children. So anyways, going to all that, we were very blessed to have this and what's this experience. And yeah, so we left Vegas and then we, flew, we were only there for three and a half days. Yeah. We flew to DC. And we, we got, well, we, thanks to... Uh, we flew with J.R. Maria. We were yeah, all first yeah, class we, in, in, we all, we in all American Airlines. So, we so um, and then thanks to Robin over at uh, Dan Sullivan's office. She graciously booked us yes. some Capital Tours on Saturday. So the four of us went and checked out Capital Tours. And actually, we were joined by a couple of other people. Um, so uh, it was just a group of us hanging out and seeing the monuments and... And, and if you enjoying. haven't done the Capitol tour, it was amazing. Like you see the pictures of and the videos of rolling of people going through the offices and all that other stuff. And I, I wish we could have done it on a day that we would have got one of the staffers. Dan Sullivan was amazing. We saw him at the fair. We told him we were coming up there. I texted him on his cell phone, told him there, took a selfie in front of the... Uh, the um, Capitol building. The Capitol building, and sent to him. Said, "Wish you were here." He said. Yeah. He sent me a text back. I mean, it was just. It was incredible. It was. It was great. And I, I'm not a big history buff, but how can you not be when you walk into that building and realize how much time and effort and the beauty in that place? It was just. Yeah. If and you if haven't done with, the Capitol tour and haven't gone and seen the monuments around there, that is like a must do. I would have never thought that. If you're with a guide who knows their history, they will tell you a story and they'll make you um, become aware of, okay, well, this is where they used to hold the meetings. And back then they used to chew tobacco and, and spit and this the floors and this. are nasty. And, 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 you, and you know, and it's just interesting to kind of like step into that corner of the world and to think about this star is where the center of DC is and the grid was built from here out. Yes. And it's just like, it's just fascinating to me. I've always loved history. So. I almost felt like we were in a time capsule and we were going through it with her. Like I could see, see people sitting in that room and see people sitting closer to the fireplace because yes. it was warmer and the newer people had to be in the back where they froze their butt off. You and know? they knew it probably too. Yeah, they and they the were movies. just, yeah. So, I mean, it's just interesting to know everybody was in that small room yeah. making laws and making things that were going to go on for our constitution and our rights, all the other stuff. It was just, the history was incredible and the statues of what they could do. And they didn't have laser machines back then. They didn't have all that stuff. I mean, they were, they were carving that stuff out. So yeah, pretty cool. The capitals and all the other stuff, we were super excited. I was dead tired the first night and I was driving everybody around. I'm like, I was about ready to pass out because we were up for like 19 hours that day. So I was, um, I was glad to get out there. But the second day was epic. So yeah, and so then something else that I'm sure if you've been listening to us for a while, the reoccurring education piece and giving back to our industry is something that is, is important to us. That's part of why we do this Raise Up podcast is it's, is it's this learning environment that we experience that we want to share with others. And so being at the Chauffeur Driven National Limousine Association is uh, show is something that we participate in every year and um, that's where we were at in Washington DC and it's you know it's only I think a second time my first time going to DC to go to the show we don't usually go to the East Coast show but <clears throat> it's well, a little further we out we're going to Florida and that's we did do some Florida DC. that's right yep. okay yeah yeah so we have gone to the Florida ones um, uh, that is uh, that one I think is a little bit more different because it's a little bit warmer weather but we're always inside so we don't get to enjoy it as much so um, DC was a little cooler. It was a little cooler. It was warm the first day or two, and then it got really cold on yeah. us. Yeah, and I think, you know, um, if you're not part of an association with your industry or you're not part of, 
your local um, chamber or your local, if you're in tourism or in transportation, if you're not part of your local vis visitors bureau, like these are communities that, that are that are just there for you to link into. Just like we link, we have these like circles of communities that we're a part of. And so like the inner circle meetings that we go to, that's part of it. The NLA stuff is part of it. The, the stuff that we have locally here in Alaska, that's part of it. And it's like, we have to be plugged in to a community that um, is helping us to grow and understand and to and to continue on our path in a positive way. I see you don't have to be, but I think it's very important that you become part of it. Because I think when we, you don't, when I say we, we, we have to. Well, and we, because we don't, you know, we're stuck in Alaska a little bit and, and our community up here is a little bit differently than it would be in California or Oregon or, or Nevada or wherever else is. And you take those tidbits, the nuggets we say, that we take those nuggets away from those different areas so we can bring it to our area because we're so differently in Alaska we how we do things. We have a different country in between us. Yeah, we just do things so very different. So, um, and to plug my wife on this, she spends at least one or two hours a week on the National Limousine Association Board of Directors for the, uh, I shouldn't say that, it's the, um, it's the it's education. the education committee. The education the committee. Planning, so yeah. she's part of a lot of the education that goes on there. So she's involved into it. And she invited me to help this time. I was a mic runner and I helped run mics around and help with that stuff. So we give back to our association. That's it. And we're very well known in there. And it's a, it's a, it's a good association to be part of. You know, it, it encourages other new members as we were encouraged when we first came. Yeah. And so it's giving back again. And and then taking the nuggets that we're getting away from it. Absolutely. Totally enjoyed uh, DC. It was a fun place to go. And then we flew to Arizona. We flew to Arizona. Yeah. And that's where we ended our trip before we came back home. So. And Arizona was our inner circle group that we went over to see. So part of the Awaken group is the inner, uh, part of Awaken is the, the Awaken I think has the, three different groups inside of it, or three different main communities. And so they have um, three tiers. And the inner circle group is the, the higher tier. And um, that's for people who are serious about overcoming obstacles, dialing into their businesses, and performing at their highest level. And so it's a higher commitment level financially and also time-wise, each, each tier that you go up. So Charlie and I made that commitment to be in that group. And this particular meeting was centered around health and all of the fascinating things that our circle here in Alaska doesn't normally discuss at that level so professionals are brought in to talk about health and looking at it from different vantage points and just some practical things that we can do to increase our well-being yeah this one was a little bit different i've never been to the health one before so um, this was our first time both going to health. yeah so uh, as we said the four quadrants they do of the uh the intensive groups uh this one was the health one so they brought some doctors in they brought some uh physical I would say physical therapy people, but people that were into yoga and to different things in about so body movement, body is movements really and things a like big that. Theme of that. Yeah, and then just uh, so many different things that we learned on it. In fact, Athena and I were just talking about that we're going to have to probably rewatch everything again because there was so much information that was being given to us. And I was taking pictures. I'm always a big picture taker, so I take pictures of the slides and what's going on with it. But your health is like, it is crazy how it affects everything, like your mind, your judgment, your movement, your joints, everything that was in there, it was just completely crazy. And so as I've been more in my health journey and going into this, really learning that there is so much more that we have no clue about how we're centered to, how the ground is a big negative field. Like we put our feet into the ground and it ground grounds us. us. I mean, like there was so much there and yes, they had me doing yoga. I tried to skip out the first day and I got guilt tripped into like, oh, Charlie, you we missed you. you. They totally screwed with me. Charlie, everybody see Charlie say something to him. So, okay, I was like, okay, Athena, we have to go the next day. And so we went and I paid for it dearly. I, I felt very sore, I felt very hurt, but I, the but first the day. the next day. The next went. day I was a little bit better and then the third day we were even better. So we did yoga four times out of five and uh, I can tell you I know what the pigeon is now and I know what the plank is and I know what the downward dog is and I know all these different languages I had no idea about, but as you started stretching it felt better and I think we prepared ourselves a little bit because we've gone into that stretch zone. Yeah. So I felt like my body was a little bit more there and being lighter on my feet, I felt like I was a lot more um, 
there. A lot more, I guess, uh, centered to where I can do a lot more of this stuff now. The one thing that did hurt me a lot is um, you're on your knees quite a bit. Um, like out of the hour and a half session, I felt like I was on my knees an hour and 15 minutes of that time. And one way of one knee down or something else done in. <clears throat> so um, I, my knees did hurt a little bit, but it didn't hurt anything like it used to. Like when I used yeah. to sit on my knees, I could only do it for a minute or two. Um, but now I felt like I was a lot better. And they feel better today. My shoulder's still a little bit sore, but great, great energy at that group. The people were there. And like this is a group you can open up to people that you don't even know, that you've never met, that you would tell them something you probably wouldn't tell one of your best friends. Like, I mean, it's just such an open group about what's going on with people's lives. And this group really people <clears throat> draw to because they get so much energy from it and they get such great advice and people are there not to judge. There's no judgment whatsoever, you know? I mean, I was probably one of the most clumsy guys out there doing it and everybody was supportive and Charlie did such a great job and the instructor, I remember at one point I couldn't get my butt down any further because I think my tummy was in the way between the ground and the and the thing and she's like, we well, just need to get your butt down a little bit more. I'm like, I don't go down anymore. She was just pushing down on my butt trying to get me to go down more. I'm like, oh, I can see a knee snapping, but she was trying to get me to my my higher self and yeah. that was the whole thing is go 100 percent in go to your higher self and i felt like sometimes i was past 100 and i was just like oh but i would lay down for a second re-get my group then come back up so yeah you know one of the things that that weekend showed me was that i had some limiting beliefs around getting back into that practice so it occurred to me that the last time that I really had been doing yoga or Pilates on a regular was before we had Audra, which Audra is 16 now. And I'm like, oh my gosh. No, I that was before. That was between Audra and Charlie. Because we were at the, um, we were at the house over there of Casey. So you did it in between the kids. I don't think we had Charlie yet. Or we might even have Charlie because that's when you and Kimberly were going. Well, that's why I was thinking that I didn't have any humans no, that I had did. to we get had, babysitters. In fact, we had both for. of them. We had both of them. Okay, well, maybe it was not quite as long, but it's been a long time. And At least 12, 14 years. I was thinking in my mind, you know, I, I do a lot of typing. If I'm putting extra pressure on my wrist, then I'm probably going to create some pain for myself. And it, it was really this like limiting belief that I had around, oh, this is going to be painful, that's going to be painful. And the whole premise around... Um, doing these practices is to connect with your body and I was basically stepping in front of myself to connect with my body and so then why is that and when we were in those practices for those few days I could definitely feel how we're pro I'm predominantly sitting when I'm doing work because I'm in front of the computer and I don't really have any stand desks things it's, it's a challenge for me to type standing and uh, I could feel my back just releasing and stretching and like I even felt taller and I could feel the strength of um, after allowing my own weight and gravity to kind of like put some movement in between my joints in new ways because like Charlie mentioned, we're in some interesting positions that we don't normally put ourselves in. Uh, it was just like it was a that great was reminder. <laughs> it was a great reminder, and um, and it definitely I had to look at. Okay, so if if I have some limiting beliefs around um, connecting with my body or doing this exercise, what what else do I need to look at? And just being kind of in that curious mindset and not judging myself, just saying I'm just open to to seeing what else. So. If, if there was one thing that you could think of about like that main takeaway that you got from that weekend, what like rises to the top for you? Well, I just think totally the fitness part of it about your health and your body. I mean, listen to that doctor that weekend uh, just was just... Dr. Like Lisa. The, yeah, just the limit, <clears throat> like the panels that we run and really check on our body of what we're limiting or what what we're deficient of and everything else like that is just so small in the spectrum. Like she really dives down deep in what's going on with your body and what's going on with everything. And I just didn't, I guess I just never, I just have taken advantage of our body like anything else. It's just like one of those things that we just, it's a vessel to get us from point A to point B, but really understanding and diving deeper into 
how it affects everything we do in our life, our, yeah. our movement, our joints, our swelling, the, everything else that was inside of it, our cardiovascular, our veins, our, the, the blood that we put into it, the oxygen we take in, the breathing treatment. I mean, the breathing <sighs> is pretty profound. It was huge profound. I mean, just taking breaths. I mean, when they were showing you how to take breaths, you would like do this for 10 minutes a day and how the oxygen would go right up to your brain and clear you out. You go, <sighs> or you do what first it's a, <sighs> And then you take the final breath. I mean, you, you take in the deepest and take in from your stomach all the way up to your lungs and <clears throat> how much oxygen that did. And then of course the cold plunge. I mean, the cold plunge was such a huge deal for us too. Um, yeah. Taking yourself to uncomfortable places to... Prove to yourself that you can regulate. Yes. And that's really the key here is it's like, we don't have to just lose our shit. When stuff hits the fan, we can choose to regulate. We can choose to stay centered in the spaces. And I think center is one of the words too. I think it, one of the things is just putting ourselves in an uncomfortable place that we know that we can do it. And, and, and for me, getting into 32 degree water with you know 100 pounds of ice sitting on top of it, and then be able to sit in there for three minutes was something differently. Now, I've, my cold plunge was didn't have anything to do with ice. Mine was just like cold water. I think the ice had a whole other layer to it, but sitting in that cold water for three minutes and then trying to control your breathing, just like you said, with five other guys that were doing the same things, so like everybody was freezing, but we, we were laughing, we had fun with it, we joked about it. At first, it was a little bit more serious for the first 30 seconds to a minute because your body was regulating. All that, all that blood and all that warmth is going to your heart, it's going to your brain, it's going to all the mm -hmm. oxygen is, all your extremities are starting to go away and you're feeling the tingleness and the tightening and you're like, oh, but, I could see the total effects of what it did to you and talking about brown fat and all the different things that go into your body, your body starts going into a warming phase and it really, your cardiovascular, your air intake, everything is just like so much more because it's in, it's in light or flight. It's, it's, it's in life or flight. Yeah, yeah, it's in a heightened state. So anyways, that was my biggest takeaway. I, I thought the health was gonna be a little bit differently. I, I've definitely been through the relationship. I've been through the financial. Um, this one was, was a key instrument and, and I can totally see why we needed that one too. Yeah. It is. It's great. Well, we wanted to catch you guys up on just kind of some of the stuff that we've been doing and um, stay tuned for the next episode. We're going to dive into some of the stuff going on at BAC and the business life. Yeah. So thank you guys. See you then. Bye. If you've been listening to us for a while, you probably have heard me talk about raiseupmindset.com. That's not just an area where you can find the um, podcast that we've already published, but you can also ask us some questions on there and sign up for our Raise Up response sheet. So please join us on our mailing list, sign up, and absolutely, if you are on social media, make sure that you are liking our posts and sharing because we wanna get the word out about all of this interesting stuff that we're learning that we're happy to share for you guys for free. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks. Thanks again for joining us on the Raise Up podcast. You can find us at raiseupmindset.com. Our socials link there so you can get anything that you need from Instagram, Facebook, our shorts. You can download the podcast straight from the website. If you're listening on another platform, please like, subscribe, share. We're just getting the word out on really the encouragement and um, propelling the entrepreneurial movement in our communities. Thanks again for listening. We've got something special at the end of our episodes now where it's called the Raise Up Response. This is just a sheet that if you wanna dive deeper, it's got questions, it's got takeaways from the podcast, click the link below and you can request it. It'll take you to our website and find it in your inbox. Thanks again, bye-bye.